Northcap 8311 Alpha Riverside Tower, reposition of 34 is approved, remain south of Alpha Taxi. Off, Rome, we're going to continue to climb straight up here for a little bit until we get about 1,300 feet. Uh, two and uh, at that point, we're going to make a turn to the south and head out over Lake Matthews and Victor. Victor. 182 Victor. Victor. You can use just your left hand so that you kind of get comfortable with how much to move the plane. Traffic over there. I don't see anybody, so go ahead and start a left turn out to the to the south. I have another little air vent here to get some air. It's a little hazy today, but the lake is kind of out in that area there. So go ahead and steer out that way a little bit. Interesting to feel the, the response of the turbulence. Yeah, it's not really turbulence as much as what you have is unevenly heated air that's moving off the surface you, of control. the ground. One frequency change approved. Have a good day. So it's uh, basically what happens is hot air rises, and uh, depending on how the air is heated, you will have some air that's rising a little faster than the other, and it kind of gives you that little washboard effect as you're close to the ground. Once we get up a little bit in altitude, yeah, usually it's moving south of altitude. The temperature is approved, remains south of altitude. What altitude are we trying to climb to? Oh, we'll go up to about 3,000. Uh, 182 Victor Victor, turn left, contact ground 121.7. Have a good day. Go ahead and lower the nose just a little bit. That's good right there. Pass on go. Cut out a little more to our right. Riverside Tower, Piper 6095 Sierra, ready. Piper 6095 Sierra, Riverside Tower, runway 27, clear for takeoff. I apologize for the haziness today, but that's... Uh,
could, uh, we want to kind of fly it out that way a little more, so if, uh, if you do some turns back and forth, just kind of end up heading that way after you're finished, so to speak. As you can tell, the plane is fairly responsive. It moves in whatever direction you're putting it in. The biggest difference between flying a plane and driving a car or such, though, is that you don't need to have continuous input. You just put input until you get to where your the picture changes to what you want it to look like, so to speak, as far as a right turn or a left turn. And once you achieve that, then you kind of neutralize the controls and you can let go if, if you wish. The plane will stay in that new attitude position until you tell it differently.
like it is when it's cooler, so we kind of, kind of like, you know, the boats on a lake, you kind of feel, feel the ripples of the water, which is... I imagine a big part of it is becoming accustomed to the sensations you feel, just like when you're in a vehicle and you break traction. It's not that big of a deal as long as you know what to expect and how to react to it. Right. Yeah, it's all a matter of just getting used to it and uh, getting comfortable with the... Uh, Fun to fly over uh, the busy roads like the 15 right below us. Everybody is uh, on uh, fast forward mode doing 60, 70 miles an hour trying to get to where they're going. Yeah, I'll bet it's even more rewarding when there's a lot of traffic. Yeah, for sure. turn up along the hills here and then we'll follow the 15 northbound back towards the Lake Matthews area. Living here in the Inland Empire, you feel how things have obviously grown over the last years, but it's kind of funny, you, you fly around and you see how there's quite a lot of space that hasn't yet been developed. Yeah. And it's kind of interesting. You would think that they built as many homes as they probably could. But this goes to show you they'll find more space if they need it. Uh-huh, sure. Yeah, that'll further uh, impact our ability to drive everywhere, of course. But yeah, it amazes me how they continue to build, but the roadways stay the same. Yeah, for many, many years they've talked about trying to figure out a way to, you know, bridge the Orange County area to the uh, Southern Inland Empire area. And they've, they've had a lot of different plans, which have none have really been worked out. But... Um, yeah, they could make it much easier for us to get around here if they really tried. I just don't know that they have the financial incentive in mind necessarily. But Amazing to see that layer of haze like that just hovering. Yeah, and, and um, it happens quite a few days here in the California area because you have... You know, the, the breeze coming from the ocean and uh, pushing basically whatever dust is in the air up towards the hills, the San Gabriel Mountains, and it kind of gets locked in here. And uh, this morning we had that cloud layer that was kind of hanging over us for a little bit. And, um, I mean, a lot of days it's beautiful, clear, and you can see all the way to Catalina. You can see all the way up to, you know, the... Uh, Bank area, so to speak, but the, the, uh, the haze some days makes it a little, a little less easy to see. The whole Inland Empire just seems so much more accessible in this way. Well, basically the, the whole country gets more accessible. Instead of deciding what to do for the weekend in Riverside, you can say, well, let's just fly up to San Luis Obispo or Monterey and, you know, go have a fun time, or let's fly out to uh, Las Vegas, or we could fly up to Mammoth and go hiking and fishing, or... You basically broaden your lifestyle with the pilot certificate. You you can do things that are quite a bit more fun, you know, and, and reasonably.
relatively close proximity. I mean, you could be in Mammoth in an hour, Las Vegas in an hour and a half. You could be in San Luis Obispo, Monterey in a couple hours, and uh, obviously doing something you enjoy to get there. So it's, it's a nice, nice way to be able to enjoy yourself a little better. And, and if you take a good friend along, then you can share the cost. And, yeah, that's the idea. It becomes a little more viable financially as well. You go ahead and uh, make a right turn and uh, fly back up towards Lake Matthews, and we're going to start descending a little bit. So if you just let the nose kind of drop just slightly below the base layer there, we'll start heading back towards Riverside. That's good right there. Now the first couple of flights that we do, we basically do kind of sort of what we did today. You get out here and you get comfortable with what controls what and how the plane functions. And then we start to practice different things like practicing turning and climbing and descending and, and uh, you know, at various airspeeds, controlling the plane at various airspeeds and so forth. And uh, we get into basically fine-tuning, if you will, uh, everything so that you can do what needs to be done. And uh, then we start practicing landings and uh, get comfortable with that. And then after that, you start flying by yourself when you're comfortable and the pilot, rather the instructor, is comfortable. And then you start learning how to get from A to B. How do we find ourselves from Riverside to, let's say, Temecula or to Phoenix or whatever? And so you learn to use the charts and you learn to navigate. Um, by reference to the charts, obviously we have, you know, onboard GPS with moving maps in the sky catcher, so that becomes really handy as well, but you want to know how to do it without all those nice, nice, uh, assistance, so to speak. If it's your backup in a sense. Yeah, basically you want to, you want to learn to do it old school so that you can, uh, feel comfortable with know, finding yourself around the countryside, even if something was to happen to the technology. And uh, then once you're comfortable with that part, then uh, we start preparing you for what's known as the check ride, and that's where you go show an examiner basically all you know how to do and what you should know. And he will issue your certification, and then uh, it's just like getting your driver's license. Now you are good enough to know how to do it on your own and that's when you really start learning because you're going to start flying to different places and you know you'll pick up little you know how to do it but you will just learn by experience so to speak as you're you know getting more and more and more time yeah it seems it's not so lonely up here when you really take a moment to look around huh well there's uh, going to be traffic around uh, especially out here in what's known as the practice area and uh, there will be other other planes to look out for. And like I said in the simulator, it's our job as pilots to always monitor and be on the lookout for other traffic. Go ahead and lower the nose just a little bit more so we continue our descent. just yet, but beyond the green colors on the ground, there's kind of a beige, sandy-looking area up ahead of you, and uh, that's the runway like this, and that's where we're going to go land, so the controller wants us to enter the pattern on a left turn to final, and to report over the uh, auto center, which is that large commercial lot that's kind of right off the nose. So the airport elevation is 820 feet, and we're at 2,820 feet right now, so we have about 2,000 feet to go. So we're just doing kind of a shallow descent as we uh, 
continue on here so that we can be uh, set up for the arrival. And basically everything that you've been doing now turning and controlling the airplane with your hands and your feet as we get to the runway we'll have to make use of all that because you're using your pitch, your roll, and the rudders to control the plane for the landing as well as we have the power of course that we can adjust as necessary to to help us out. Four five three six six Riverside Tower, it's your left base runway. Two thousand five hundred. Out of center information. Basically, you think of it as a funnel, if you will. Four altimeter two nine nine. The uh, two nine five four. Your the amount of uh, left base for two seven. Of space that you have Douglas three to play with gets smaller and smaller as you get closer. So basically, four hundred. Your Douglas three six six Roger. A room of error, so to speak, gets tighter and tighter, and we have to make small nice corrections to keep the plane. Uh, concerned citizen saying that your right engine was blowing out a dark smoke, and they said it didn't appear to be engine oil. Um, just to give you a heads up. Uh, Roger, that's why we're coming back into land. Three six six traffic one o'clock one mile southbound three thousand feet. I'm not talking the aircraft. Don't know uh, what type. Uh, Roger, looking. Yep. Okay, so the runway and the airport is up ahead of us. There, we can uh, see the three six six northbound runway over on our left, which is the short little one. That's one thousand eight hundred entering a left. And we're going to land on the uh, runway two seven right there. If able, fly towards the numbers, runway 27, clear to land. Oh, it's the numbers, clear to land, 27, clear to land. So, coming in for landing here, we reduce our power slightly so that we can uh, slow down at the same time that we're descending. Which is uh, I catch a two four. When you can resume your own navigation, runway uh, two seven, clear to land. Clear to land two seven two four. So here's uh, we're on what's called the left base, meaning that we're going to make a left turn to final. And uh, we're, while we're coming down, we uh, control the plane with the ailerons and the rudders and the pitch, just basically making small corrections to keep the nose. 500. Great, and the wings level. And, uh, once we get a little closer here, we're going to go ahead and start our turn to line up on the runway. Now, I'm going to help you out with the landing here, but obviously you can have your feet on the pedals so you feel what's going on, and you can have your hand on the controls to follow along, but basically what we're going to do is just uh, line up on the center line, and as we're, as we're coming down, we're keeping the nose just below the numbers a little bit, and as we get a little closer, we are going to put a focus at the very far end of the runway, so about here we look at the very far end of the runway, and as we're getting closer, we see the runway kind of coming up towards us. So we reduce the power as we get over the runway and then we just kind of hold the plane off and wait for it to settle. Steering with the rudders, keeping the nose level. And we touch down. Steering with our feet. And once speed is down a little bit, we're gonna go ahead and turn off to the taxiway. Okay, to two four one turn left next taxiway contact ground point seven. Point seven two four. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, that's great fun, huh? Okay, you're gonna clean up the airplane, turn off some lights, contact ground. Ground was gonna catch the two four one south two seven uh, Foxtrot taxi, I was there. Catch two 
Well, there we are. 